If you're new to slow stitching and you're not sure where to get started, I'm here to help. I'm going to go over supplies, simple stitches, like the running stitch done in parallel and offset, as well as the stab stitch, and point you in the direction of some beginner friendly projects. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. If you're really struggling to know where to get started with slow stitching, I have some ideas today. First and foremost, I want to just say, just get stitching. And here's some ways that you can do that. I have a couple of examples here of where I just stitched. This is a piece of quilting cotton and I folded it in half. And I just started stitching, no plan or idea. I have no batting in the middle, just the, the fabric folded over on itself and I began stitching. With this piece, it's just one piece of solid fabric and I put some felt on the back and I started stitching. I stitched all the colors and then I started coming back in with black, adding some details. Here's another example where I have a piece of quilting cotton folded onto itself and I began experimenting with color and texture, making an abstract shape, playing with lines, doing some blanket stitching, no real plan of what to do with this. That's a really nice way to just get your hands moving. Another idea is to start stitching a long straight piece. You might even think of it as a scroll. This could be a scroll and I have these pieces that are hanging off the end so I could add some more felt and continue and make this a scroll. Here's an example of a scroll that I've finished and I'll link to this project if you want to see it from the very start of dyeing this fabric to the stitching from the beginning to the end. And that's a four part series that really goes into detail. Now on this one, this is more of a little story because there's animals on it. And the seam changes as it goes along. And then I've attached it to this dowel I also stitched on the back, so this can also be wound the other way. So this is more of a completed project. And at the beginning, when I started, if you watch the videos, I had some kind of a plan about what I wanted to do. But you really don't need to have a plan. And with this piece, I could continue and make it longer and make another scroll, but also at this point, I could finish my stitching. I've just started here, it's not complete. And what if I wanted to join this onto itself? This would make a really nice pin cushion. Well, here's an example of a pin cushion that I made. And I'll link to that video as well. Well, you can see I started with a long strip here. I made a collage, I stitched it. I added a bottom piece. I added some felted wool on the top. And this turned into a pincushion. So that could definitely happen here, but I have no plan at this point. I've just been stitching for the sake of stitching. I created a collage of fabrics and now I've started my stitching. Here's another one that I've just started. So I've made, a, this is a little bit wider. And I've made a collage. I've secured down the pieces and I've started doing some stitching. Because this piece is wider, there's a few more options about what I could do with it. If you've seen my drawstring pouch projects, which are beginner friendly tutorials, that starts with a wide piece and then it can be turned into, this is folded here and stitched at this side and stitched at the bottom and the channels are added later. So this started about double this width and then it became a pouch and it's also lined. I'll link to that project as well. And with this piece, I don't have a plan and I don't feel like I need to have a plan, but even now that I've got started, I can see that there's some possibilities. I can turn this into a scroll. I could also fold this in half and this could become a case for these new markers that I got. So I got this set of black markers I'm going to use these with watercolor painting and they would fit in here. I could 
sew up the sides. I could add little panels on the side if I wanted it to be a little wider. I could add channels, just like with this bag, and make it a drawstring at the top. I also could get a small zipper, and I could make it a zip top. So that's an option. I even have a project where I took a longer stitched piece that had been used before as a cozy for a planter, and I turned it into a little purse. So I'll link to that as well. I don't feel like I need to decide right now what this project wants to be. I'm just going to stitch and enjoy the colors I've chosen for my collage, the different threads, and the experimenting I'm doing with the stitching here. You can see I've done a spiral blanket stitch, and I'll link to how I've done that. I have another video where I show how I've done this, and I'm just stitching however I feel in the moment. This is a, not a piece of felt. This is actually a piece of fleece that I found. I can't remember what project it was from, but it's a leftover piece, and so I decided to add some collage and stitch on this. When I use embroidery floss, I usually use two strands, sometimes one strand. And for that, I use embroidery needles and Milner's needles. I also like to use pearl cotton size eight. And for the pearl cotton, I recommend using a chenille needle size 24. Also, it can be called a tapestry needle size 24. You can also use a long darner number one a Milner's needle number one, or a Milner's needle number three. Today I'm using embroidery floss, two strands, and I'm going to show how I do a couple of simple stitches. You can see here I've done a running stitch, and I've done them so that they line up with each other, and that causes a pulling and a puckering that's really nice, lots of really nice texture. So to do that, come up from underneath and you can work right on the top. Go in and come out and you can stack a number of stitches at a time. You don't have to do one. You can do whatever feels right. So you can come out and go back in. And then if you come to the end of the row you're stitching, you can let the needle stay underneath. And then come up. I like to turn my work, so I'm always going in the same direction. Some people like to go in different directions so they don't turn their work. And then I'm just following that first line of stitching that I did and coming in and going out in roughly the same spot. And whether or not I take one stitch at a time or I stack them up is really just, it's kind of random. It's just whatever my hand feels like doing. It has to do with the thickness of the fabric that I'm going through and what seems easiest. or the angle that I'm at. You can see that these stitches I'm making are not exactly perfect. And I'm not worrying about that. And it still looks good. So here are three rows done that way where you're lining them up. And I'm going to show another way you can stitch like I did here, where the stitches are more or less offset with each other. So I've switched to black thread two strands of the embroidery floss and I'll show how I do my quilter's knot. I point the end of my thread towards the sharp side of my needle and then I grab the end of the black thread. I wind a few times. I pinch down. I hold that little bundle. And I pull it all the way to the end and that's my quilter's knot. So this is also straight stitching or a running stitch just like before, but the only difference is I'm paying attention to my previous row and I'm offsetting the stitches. 
this is a fabric right here is a little bit thick so I'm going to do one stitch at a time to get through it so I'm going to come up kind of in the middle of this stitch from the previous row and go in and come up at the end of this other stitch and then go into the middle of the next one can also come up in the middle of the two stitches. Wh whatever way works for you to kind of offset the stitches and it doesn't have to be perfect at all. So there's a row of imperfect stitches, but it still looks good. And I'm gonna come back and start a little distance away and I'm going to create another row. This is just one way to do it. It's the way that I often work. And you may have a way that works better for you, that feels better in your hand, Maybe you like to go quicker than I do. Maybe you like to pull it all the way to the back each time with each stitch. And that's an option too. Some people do that. So with that method, you go under to the back and then you come back and you do that for each stitch. So that's a straight stitch, not as much a running stitch, but the effect is much the same. You can do whatever works for you. And there's my imperfect straight stitches. So some time has passed and I've done some more stitching and you can see I've done more of these simple stitches. Adding black on the one side, adding some parallel stitches in blue on the other and here's my smaller piece where I've used red thread to tie everything together doing stitches in different directions but again just following this simple idea I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with this piece I have the pieces of fabric coming off the end it could become a pin cushion like I'd mentioned I don't feel like I need to decide right at this moment, but I'm really happy with the stitching that I've done and the way it's brought everything together. So I hope that that gives you some ideas about the kinds of things that you can make with your stitching and it empowers you to just take a chance and just grab some fabric and some thread and, st and start experimenting with the different type of stitches that you can do. And it doesn't have to be beautiful. It's just a time to explore and learn. And if you want to at the end, turn it into something functional. This could be a pouch, for example. Then you can do that too. My biggest piece of advice is just to pick up your needle and thread, pick up some fabric and give it a go. Feel free to check out my other videos for inspiration about projects and getting started in slow stitching. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and I'm happy to answer. Until next time, happy stitching.